Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Well, it's been a few weeks since we've had a video come out and we've been super busy here. Been working on some projects, been getting ready to extract honey next week. We also picked up this new dump trailer. It's going to help us with some projects around here. It's going to help us with some moving projects, uh, some demo projects, remodeling that barn that we talked about in the past video. And so I picked this up here at locally from a dealer, a trailer dealer used. Got a pretty good deal on it, but come to find out it had a few wiring issues. And rather than take it to the dealer and have them deal with it and still not have it probably the way I want it, I decided to go ahead and get those taken care of myself. So we're going to walk through a couple little things, take a look here, and then we'll show the big project that we're going to cover in this video. So this trailer uses the 7-pin flat connector to hook onto the truck. When I first got the trailer, they had a bunch of wiring mess that was tied, just zip tied here. Everything was tied together using like household grade wire nuts and things like that. Um, the trailer itself had a pretty good uh, wiring system put into it that worked really well. And you can see that comes out right here out of this hole. So I got online and went to Amazon and I picked up this little box right here. I'll make a link in the description. The two screws are already taken out of it, but I wired this up. And it's not perfect, but it used the wire that we had available, used all the connectors that we had here. Um, and what it has is you have your main wiring harness coming from the truck on this side. You have all seven pins here. They're all color-coded on here as to which ones they go to. The wiring on the trailer was not color-coded correctly. So everything on the bottom is color-coded correctly. Everything on top is not. It also has heavy gauge wire for the ground and the charge wire for the battery or the power wire for the trailer so that was very nice there and the rest of the wires are also a pretty good size gauge as well so I ended up using the power wire that was on the trailer going to the battery which is in this loom going here and that goes up to the battery inside the box here so that's what we're going to take a look at so on a dump trailer you have a pump that's mounted somewhere in this case it's inside this box then you also have a battery typically and the battery needs to be charged either with a charger when you're parked at home or it needs to be charged off the truck there are several different ways to do that there's 12 volt to 12 volt chargers that you can mount inside the box here that will charge the battery you can also uh, get a household grade charger that uh, just when you take it home at night you have it plugged into the 110 volt outlet and it's just like a little battery charger uh, trickle charger or float charger you can do it that way the other option is you can use some kind of solar system that you can mount onto the lid but for our case we're going to use the wire off the truck to charge it and you can't get very much power out of that wire very much charging but for what we're going to be doing which is one or two dumps a day and a lot of driving in between whether we use it at the cabin or whether we use it here to move things around we're only going to dump a couple times a day we're not going to be using it you know like a commercial vehicle would be where it's just continuous so we're going to use the charge wire off of the truck here that ties onto the positive terminal to add some voltage to this battery or some power to this battery with the alternator of the truck so a couple issues with that system that's definitely the the cheapest system for sure it may not be the most effective and the most uh it isn't going to charge the battery the most that's for sure so a couple issues with that system one of them is you run the risk of blowing the fuse for your trailer power in your fuse box on the truck to mitigate that guys will often unplug their connector from the truck every time they want to run the dump which is inconvenient another option that guys have done is build some sort of a setup like this this was actually on the truck when i started on my truck um, when I bought it and what it does is when this wire here which was tied into the cigar lighter uh, fuse in the fuse box it would activate this relay when the truck would start connect the two terminals here which one would be on the truck battery side the other one was on the trailer side it would connect that to allow charge to go to the trailer or power to go to the trailer when the truck was running and then as soon as the ignition was shut off, it would disconnect the trailer batteries. This system probably works the best of any to ensure that your trailer will never run your truck battery dead while it's turned off. 
Um, however, the issue that we had here was we we're losing about one volt of electricity across this relay here. So it was probably not making a good connection. And then where these two heavy wires are at the other end, there was so much corrosion where it had been tied in by the previous owner that it was also losing voltage there and intermittently not working. So I went ahead, took this off, put the truck back to original exactly the way it was uh, from the factory, uh, which is the power is always being provided to the uh, trailer hitch plug-in, the trailer plug-in, but the other issue with that is you can run your truck batteries dead if you leave lights on in your trailer or something like that. So I have to be very, very cautious with that. So at this point we have proper charge voltage coming to the uh, back of the truck. It's not a whole lot of amperage, so it's not really going to charge it uh, quickly, or it's not going to really charge it at all. It's just kind of going to maintain it throughout the day. So what we're going to do next is we're going to build a system to ensure that we don't blow the fuse in the truck. So the issue that happens if you don't unplug the power from the truck when you're running the dump trailer battery is you can blow the fuse in the fuse box in the truck. So to prevent that, what you can do is you can install a relay in this line right here to disconnect power from the truck every single time the motor on this pump is activated. So we're going to go ahead and cut this wire right here where I've already got it marked. And then we're going to install a relay. We're going to install the one side of the relay, what activates the relay, to this pin right here, which is the pin that has power when the motor's running. Then we're going to install the other side of the relay to ground. Then the two power wires that go through the relay that it's actually going to be breaking the circuit on is right here. So here's the relay that I have. I've already gone ahead and hooked this black and red wire up. These are going to be the power wires uh, that are going to activate the relay itself. Then you can see here that pin 85 and 86, that's where I've hooked the red and black wire. Then pin 87A and pin 30 have continuity when the relay is at rest. And then pin 87 and pin 30 have continuity when the relay is activated. So we're going to use relay pin 87A and 30. And then when we activate power to the relay, it's going to break that circuit. So in using this system, what we're going to basically be doing is disconnecting the truck power from the charge wire every single time the motor in the trailer is activated. So there will be no risk of the uh, fuse getting blown by a low trailer battery. This is still not going to make any difference in charging the trailer more effectively or anything like that. We're still going to get very, very minimal charge from the truck into the trailer, but we will at least make sure we're not going to trip the fuse in the truck. We don't have to shut the truck off while we're doing this, while we're doing the trailer. And so it'll make things a little bit more reliable. All these parts will be linked in the description below, so take a look if you want to pick them up. You can do this yourself. It's pretty easy. It just takes probably 20 minutes here, and we'll have it done. So the best way to make sure your trailer battery is going to get charged completely off your truck is to use this system here using heavy gauge wire on the sides, not what's there, running a heavy gauge wire from the truck all the way back. That would be a good system if you're going to be doing some sort of commercial use with a dump trailer or something like that that's going to be heavy duty, continuous, all day long use. You can do it that way using those heavy wires but then you have to have some kind of extra connector back at the trailer or something like that besides the regular seven pin connector so we're going to do this relay installation here and it'll be real simple we'll take a look so here's what we have hooked up so far we've got a red and black wire that are going to activate the relay and then we've got the two sides of our wire that was going to the battery hooked up to the other relay and that is the when the relay is in a stagnant state with no power those leads are connected and then as soon as we apply power to these two wires it will disconnect so it won't be pulling power from the truck battery and blowing the fuse so we're going to go ahead and hook up these red and black wires and then we'll be back all right so here it is all set up i've got the uh, multimeter just plugged into the hot and the ground on the trailer connector and you can see as soon as the trailer moves it disconnects from the truck battery and goes to zero. Then as soon as you let go of the button and the trailer motor, trailer lift motor stops, it connects again.
So that's what it's going to do when it's hooked to the truck. It'll just disconnect from the battery and then reconnect uh, as soon as the, the motor in the trailer shuts off. So here's what we have in the trailer. I had to get a different relay from the one I started with. I had two of them. The one I started with was bad, apparently, because it was getting weird continuity throughout the relay. So I replaced it with this one, just like it, and it's working well. Um, so I've got the two green connectors you can see here are the two battery leads, and they're connected to, if I can get this to focus, 87A and 30, and then when it disconnects, the relay switches over to connect to 87, which I just hooked this blank connector to just to protect it from shorting out. Then the red and the black wire are hooked on 85 and 86. And then what I'm gonna do is secure this right here to the uh, battery cable or maybe to the battery handle, one or the other, just to keep it from moving around and, and being a problem. So that's what we've got and real simple uh, job there. Again, the point of doing this is to prevent the problem of blowing the fuse in the truck if this battery gets low in the trailer. So I'll link all these parts in the description. I'll also link a couple other options, that other big relay I showed you if you wanted to run the heavy duty cables back to the trailer, um, several other options there. So hope everybody enjoyed the video. Remember you can't finish a project without getting started.